What's up, guys? Chatter Rockstar here once more. We're getting educational once again. <clears throat> a lot of these games, quite honestly, have been educational for me. So, thank you, guys. And uh, glad you're enjoying the content. Glad you're enjoying uh, the stuff that I'm putting out there. I hope you like it. And uh, let's keep going. Let's do this episode. We are playing Mr. Toothless Ted number nine. Because apparently there's there's eight other ones, right? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> All right. So first things first. Lots of gambits. Lots of stuff. So this game won't get crazy. So right away, draw two cards. I got five, and then I got um. I forget the name of this gambit, but it's one trade, and then it allows you to top deck a ship. So, if you take a look at the row out here, there's a couple of different plays that you can make, right? You have this gambit here that lets you get any four cost card. And then this card here that lets you top deck ship. So I'm working with five trade and one top and one uh, free four cost or less ship. Um, I was looking at this and I thought, okay... I want to target the Bounty Hunter because I can. And I want to be able to top deck it because you know, it's a great card. And I want us to start cycling damage and get aggressive right away. There's mostly reds and greens out here. So this game's probably going to go pretty fast. And typically games with a lot of gambits, or games like played with gambits, usually go fast as well. Because you get to circumvent a lot of things that would um, require you to take more turns. So... I was kind of looking at it, I'm thinking, I'm already thinking, let's just go aggro. Like, let's get the attack, let's start pushing damage. And um, so I was targeting Bounty Hunter, and I was going to use the Gambit to get the Patrol Bot, which is ultimately what I did. Um, I think there are other ways to go. Sentinel is actually a good card, too. Maybe you can pair that with the, with the uh, Swarm Cluster or some other cheap green base. I think it's actually a lot more powerful than people think. Um, and I might have underrated it compared to the Bounty Hunter. But I was also thinking there was a really good shot I could get the Defense Center as well. And maybe pair those two up. Bounty Hunter, Defense Center. Uh, and I was still going to pick up Patrol Bot anyway to make sure that I, I potentially had Scrap. Um, but when you don't have other reds, Patrol Bot does kind of go down in value too. So, I think these decisions are relatively close. It really kind of depends on how much you value Bounty Hunter. And I actually highly value Bounty Hunter. So, that's kind of what I went with. But I definitely think an argument could be made to top deck the patrol bot. And that would give you a little bit of extra trade, which you can then use to buy the Bounty Hunter or buy the Defense Center on the next turn. And then go Sentinel Explorer to give you more trade, try to get the Swarm Cluster. There's a couple of different ways to go. It's it's turn one. And while turn one doesn't always define the game, it can certainly start to set you down a path. And that's what I felt like this turn did. So I decided to go to, to start going down the aggressive path and go with Bounty Hunter. But I definitely think there's plenty of other plays that you could make that would be equally good, but would just take you down a different route for the game and sort of a different um, different plan for the game. Yep, we go ahead and get Bounty Hunter, and then Merc Battlecruiser flips. There's no way I can get that, but I'm definitely going to get this Patrol Bot here. Again, Sentinel is a very good card, and I do kind of wish I could get both of them, but... These this is the hand I was I just this is the path I decided to go with so although I would say one could argue if you were trying to go just pure aggro to get the sentinel and that would have been a better play but I wanted the trade I wanted the scrap too and my opponent managed to pick up battle blop which was really unfortunate for me him him getting six is huge merc battle cruiser or the battle blob both would have been excellent cards. Especially if he's able to get Sentinel. Especially if he's able to get Swarm Cluster. Or just any other blob. Battle Blob is a ridiculously strong card. The ability to do 8 damage in one turn. Straight up. Or 
add max, you know, or maximum value, draw a card, and deal 12 is so good. So good. So I actually really like his decision too, because now he's saying, oh, you're going to go aggro? No, no, no. I'm going to go aggro. I like it. I like this play a lot. Well, so we go ahead and pick up Sentinel anyway. And then here's where I think the game turns. The cutter flips. <clears throat> cutter is so, so good. So, so good. It gets trade, it gets healing, it potentially gets damage. And honestly, that's a card I would really want. If I got that and paired it with my bounty hunter, this game would have been over. But I'm still feeling okay, you know? I'm up, I'm up on life. You know, I'm a turn ahead. The, the aggressive nature is here. So, again, like I said, because I decided to go aggro, I was I end up picking the missile bot. But I think it's actually a mistake. When he picks up the cutter, he's clearly signaled, okay, I know that you're going aggro. So I'm going to pick up just enough healing to counter your aggro, and, and I'm going to have enough damage to bash you through. So... Even though I hate leaving scraps to people, and I do have a red card in my deck, there's a very good argument to be made to get the defense center here and play a little bit more defensively and have, like, just enough protection to counter his aggro. To counter his aggro. So this is one of those games where, like, you can tell each player is making decisions based off each other. And... Like, often the, often the decisions in the early part of the game are going to determine kind of who wins in the later part of the game. So, I, li I like the way he's playing, and I do think this is ultimately the correct decision. Again, I've, I've, I've sort of made my choice. The problem is, though, is when you commit to an aggro strategy so early, your opponent can make every move your opponent makes can be a counter strategy to it. Whereas if you play like a longer game strategy, a heal scrap strategy, a base strategy, stuff like that, your opponent isn't always making the same calculations, um, optimal calculations, right? You're like, okay, I'm going aggro. And your opponent's like, cool, I'm going to get all the bases, all the healing, all the scrap, and I'm going to just keep you off and whittle you down. Like, like that's the counter aggro strategy. That is a very potent aggro, counter aggro strategy. Um, whereas if you're going like, okay, I'm getting some trade, I'm maybe get a scrapper or two, not quite sure what's going on. Then your opponent's kind of like, okay, should I go aggro? Should I be getting trade? Should I be getting bases? I'm not sure what my opponent's doing. I can't really make hate buys and counter buys, but I guess I'll just kind of go with my strategy. So... It's really nice because it doesn't commit you to any one strategy, and then your opponent cannot counter, cannot commit to a counter strategy. And that's what ends up happening here, is because I just very blatantly committed to an aggressive strategy, my opponent was just like, okay, I'm going to counter it, and here's how. And he went about and he did it. And yeah, was it lucky that he got those particular cards? Sure, but he also made the conscious decision to get them. So here I am, just going aggro, you know, no big deal. And my opponent sees it, you know, he gets patrol bot, this is fine, right? And then look what he does here. So he was attempting to get five, right? He was trying to get fed cruiser, he was trying to get defense center. Like, that was that was the plan. It ends up not working, he ends up getting the um, explorer instead. But you can see, he's like, he knows what's up. He's going for that healing, he's going for that protection. So then I just go, I can't afford anything. So I just blast him in the face, shoot him for 10. Like, we're, we're, we're going for it. But notice, he's only at 35, right? Like, he's, he's doing fine. He's not threatened. And then he picks up Federation Cruiser, and this is where I need to adjust. And I don't, right? Because look, he's, I'm down to 36 already. He's healed back up to 39. He gets the Fed Cruiser. That's coming in a little bit later. And I don't adjust. Right? So right here, what I should have done, I should have healed. 
Uh, actually, no. I, I think drawing actually is the right play here. Uh, giving yourself an opportunity to potentially get defense defense center is the right play. Um, I did have other cards that that could give me more trade, but I'm 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 behind now, you know, and I have no blues to complement this bounty hunter, so it's definitely losing its effectiveness. And, and notice I buy the I buy the base to just protect my face because like I realize now like I'm I'm getting smacked. So he gets defense center, which ends up not even mattering in this game. And look, I'm already down to 28. Like, it, I, I, I am definitely, like, wondering at this point, like, am I going to be able to get him down fast enough? I don't know. So he heals up. He heals up 26, right? He gets another good base. So, like, you know, he's he's safe. He's safe. He's protected at this point. And then just here comes the ridiculous turn where he drops freaking 21 on me, and I'm down to one. All of a sudden. And, you know, did he get lucky to draw all his cards together? Yeah. But that was the, sort of the point of his deck. Block, block, block. But also just, you know, keep whittling me down. He had a couple of turns where he didn't do anything. So he was bound to get his cards all together and have that one big shot. And at this, you know, obviously I'm on my heels now. There's nothing I can do. It's crazy, you know, like, like, I felt relatively secure through a lot of this game, but, you know, it just takes that one big turn. But the thing is, when he had the one big turn, I was already down to 20-something. That's the problem when you go aggro and your opponent knows it, and then he says, uh-uh, I know what you're trying to do, I'm gonna take immediate steps to counter it, and that's what he did. And you gotta give your, you gotta give your, you know, just gotta tip your hat. You gotta tip your hat to your opponent for reading your game plan and saying, I'm gonna go against it. I'm gonna make sure that everything you do is not gonna work. So, props, man, you know? The thing is, it's like, when you play a player who is, like, significantly higher level than you, go and just full-on aggro, aggro scrap. Like, I usually recommend that. That's That's typically the best way to try to beat a player who's better than you. Like, it's, it's usually the best strategy. Um, but, you know, really good opponents, if they know what you're doing and they get the cards to, to make the counters, to make the proper counters, you know, they can stop it. Aggro is, is a, an effective strategy, but it also kind of requires your opponent to not draw very well, to not draw the proper cards that they need to counter it. You know, if they do get a couple of healing cards, a couple of bases... All of a sudden, damage that should be going to their face is going into their base. And that's really, really hard to recover from. Especially with my deck, while it was getting efficient, it wasn't at the efficiency point where I was going to be able to drop 20 on him. And so he was, um, he was fortunate in a sense that he was able to get to that nice chunk of 20 and then get me down so low that I was dead next turn. But... That's what his deck was trying to do. That's what he was setting up for anyway. You know, back off, back off, back off, bam! And then once he did that, it was over. It was over. It was very, you know, Floyd Mayweather kind of counterpunchy strategy. And he knew exactly what he was doing, and he did it well. So, major props, Toothless Ted. Way to go. I, I, you know, hey, I got outplayed. Sometimes, you know. A couple of videos before, I was like, oh, I'm getting unlucky. Like, no, got outplayed this time. So, well done, sir.